As it probably isn't a surprise to some of you out there, the rating system in this game is absolute garbage. It's biased, selective, opinionated, and just overall a demonstration of both moderators and Ruptop himself being inconsistent and up their own ass. And this approach to this rating system is also what has led to rated levels today being the most boring rated level that the game has ever seen. Wrapped up with a selective and opinionated rating system has successfully managed to take a game with so much creative potential and turn it into a factory produced list of levels that you forget as soon as you've beaten them. And I say beating them because if you're good enough at the game, you can one attempt most of the levels being rated since Wrapped Up absolutely adores rating hard and harder rated levels. Now if there are some of you watching who have no idea what I'm talking about here, let me give you a bit of a background. Geometry Dash has a bunch of levels, players can upload their own levels in this game for other players to play. If a level has high enough quality, there's a chance that Robtop, the main developer of the game, will give the level a star rating which helps with its publicity and gives players a bigger reason to play this specific level of yours. A moderator in this game has the job of sending these types of levels to a list that Robtop has access to. He has a few different ways for sorting this list, but this is not known to the public to ensure that players and creators don't exploit the system in order to gain an unfair advantage over others. To also ensure no one figures out how the system works, Robtop changes how the list is sorted regularly and checks through it to find levels to rate, which would imply the level giving stars and potentially coins if a player beats it. Now I don't know if this is actually public knowledge, but I asked some public servers if they knew how the system functioned, and apparently some of them knew, so I guess it is known. Maybe there's a few aspects of this that aren't known, but honestly I don't care anymore. The way you become a moderator, there exists a certain... thing which I'm probably not going to mention anywhere since I will probably be put on a stake if I do, but through this thing, Robtop brings up names from time to time he heard are influential enough in the community, and other names are brought up by older moderators, a high-ranked version of the normal moderator status. Ultimately, Robtop doesn't know the community that well, so it is up to the bigger community names to decide who gets to become a moderator, mainly these two, Viper and Paws. As a moderator, you're also expected to behave a certain way. This is an unwritten rule, and you won't really be told about it anywhere, but once you become a moderator, you're treated as part of a staff that represents the game. Although you aren't paid for this, this is mainly done in personal interest and your own time investment, so you can lose your moderator status for talking about money and stuff like that. The way some moderators send levels is through Twitch streams, Google forums, Discord servers, etc. And they have their own personal preference on how to approach sending levels which is their only actual obligation. Now, since some moderators are definitely going to be watching this video, I will have to generalize the moderation team for the sake of a flowing script. So bear in mind that this isn't targeted at any specific individual. Some moderators out there are great at their job, can give constructive criticism, can tell you why they like or dislike something. And if that's the case, you know who you are. Unfortunately, not everyone is like this, and some of them aren't this good at their job. So don't take this as a personal attack, but rather as an attack towards the system. In theory, a rating system for community levels is really good. You end up demonstrating some of the best levels in the game by giving them stars to attain and put on a list of featured levels for anyone to try. There would be a reward for going the extra mile of ensuring your level has high quality, encouraging you to do well and improve. But because of how Robtop and the GD moderation team approach this, this system currently is f***ing terrible. There are many examples I can bring up to showcase that as a fact, but if you want a prominent example of the subjective and biased nature of the system, look no further than how demons are rated. In recent times, the way demons are rated have been changed. It's not as simple as a moderator has to send it for it to appear in Robtop's list of levels. Now, they are put through another barrier where a huge portion of the entire moderation team needs to settle with a democracy vote to see if they all agree on rating this specific demon. There are a ton of issues with this. Not only does a democracy vote to settle for a rate take way, way too f***ing long, the votes are also inconsistent in what is deemed a good or bad level. Not only that, it also presents the selective and biased way Rob and the moderators rate levels perfectly. Documented on the 20th of August 2022, the most rated level difficulty in the entire game is the harder difficulty, sitting at an approximate total of 10,294 harder rated levels. Followed shortly after, we have the hard difficulty, sitting at an approximate total of 8,464 harder rated levels. The demon rating are not even close to these numbers. The approximate total of demon levels sits at 5,302. The competition is not even close. These two difficulties represent more than half of every rated level in the entire game. The hard and harder rated levels versus all the other ratings combined reveals that 63.8% of every rated level 
is a hard or harder rated level. These two difficulties aren't put through a filter. They aren't given special treatment despite there being a ton of them. Then you have demons given this selective and democracy-oriented voting all of a sudden. Why? Why are these type of levels given this treatment? I mean, don't get me wrong, the amount of extreme demons people make is f***ing AIDS, but you can't have a system like this. It is so undeniably biased that even the cancel culture would call you out. But as I said, this is only a side issue. This serves more as a demonstration of the biased nature of the system. The main issue comes down to the fact that it is very unclear what is deemed good enough. And no matter how well you create your level, there's a chance that it will never ever be given the proper recognition, regardless of your position in the community. Moderators saying your level isn't sent worthy means you haven't done a good enough job. You clearly just have to make a better level. Yeah, thanks, Professor. Evidently, if the level simply isn't good enough for a rate, then that's a sign for the creator to improve and strive to do better based off the criticism the moderators have given them. But the criticism coming from moderators is muddled by the inconsistent and mixed replies that they all give as a result of their subjective view on what a good level is. They lack a foundation for the community to understand what is required. It is very unclear what is deemed good enough in general. Given us some levels is essentially incomplete, compared to others within the same field or level rate, but given a rate or feature anyway. We can also go back to the previous topic of GD community's art criticism being worthless because moderators fall into the exact same issue. They give rankings of quality on a level based on what they think is right, which I stressed in that video is the worst possible way to approach the criticism of art. Because of that, the main issue with this rating system comes down to that it is unclear what is deemed a correctly made level. You aren't encouraged to experiment. The way levels are rated in this game doesn't encourage experimenting. You aren't rewarded for trying new ideas, even if they would tell you otherwise. What the hell are you on about, Stormfly? We've seen creators that try a unique approach to making levels all the time, and the community gives high praises to those levels. There clearly is a level of creativity that creators and players can appreciate, so what is this discussion all about? Yeah, you're right. There are levels that do this, and that's a good thing. But what does a level being rated really imply? Does it mean that the level is pretty? Does it mean that it is fun to play? Does it mean it match today's standards for gameplay and decoration? Does it perhaps represent the song it is using perfectly? It could of course be all of these things, but that is not a guaranteed fact at all. For instance, the epic feature rating turned into a complete joke upon release because of what levels Roped Up chose to epic feature, since they barely reflected the quality the rating was meant to represent. Not only that, but the entire feature list for a big portion of it do the exact same thing nowadays. You can create a general set list for what these levels usually do. I'm going to avoid the extreme demons to showcase this because that would make proving this set list to be accurate way too damn easy. So I'll be showcasing the levels from the feature tab and normally rated levels. Here, let's have a look. Click base sync. Structures that move that doesn't need to move, but do it anyway to make the level appear more busy than it actually is. Blind transitions. You want to be free, huh? Don't worry, I'll leave. Invincible pads meant to help you, but instead screws you up because there's no indication. That happens all the time. So if you're going to put uh, a, a secret bounce invisible in a portal, it kills me. Like, you guys drive me crazy with this stuff. It, you don't know how much I die from this and like in the middle of a level. Arrows telling you where to jump, eliminating any form of challenge since you can focus on the arrows and ignore the level's visuals completely. Game mode sections that barely last for 2-3% of a level, as if the creator is having a panic attack. So many goddamn levels follow these exact same rules for when making levels, and a few momentary levels that show up to break the cycle of repetitiveness doesn't suffice in the slightest. 
Well, what if I enjoy all these things, Stormfly? Just because you don't enjoy it doesn't mean everyone else doesn't. That's not the point of this argument. The fact that creators make these types of tropes is not the problem. Apart from the unfair stuff, these tropes have their place. It's the same with artless levels. The artless does have a right to exist, similarly to things like KFC. What annoys me is that we have seen these kinds of levels that repeat these tropes over 5,000 f***ing times now, and whenever one level suddenly does something that is somewhat out of the norm, it gets overly praised as if it has revolutionized creating. And yes, creators repeating tropes a lot is bound to happen in any community game with any update, but it has gotten so bad over the past few years that this same style of creating has become a comfort zone. The idea of deviating from it is seen as a negative, not because it is inherently bad, but because it is uncommon. Being unusual is seen as a negative. So really, the argument overall doesn't change. So many creators play it safe and follow these exact same boring criteria for the sake of getting stupid creator points. You enjoying these levels doesn't change jack sh**. Just because you want to be part of a hive mind where all of those part of it enjoys the same crap doesn't mean everyone else wants to. I hate that the main motivation for creating in the general community is to get creator points. I hate that the common creator is deathly afraid of even trying to go outside of their comfort zone. All this rating system has managed to achieve over the last 4-5 to five years is amplify the issue of factory produced garbage that serve no purpose other than getting a rate. Robtop doesn't tell you to be original, he doesn't motivate you to do something special, he just wants something decent enough so that he can push out content in the game that isn't his to try and make himself appear as if he's still adding content after almost 6 years of negligence. Imagine for a second that Robtop wasn't the one who was rating all the levels in-game and that the daily slash weekly level system didn't exist. What purpose does Robtop serve then with user levels? And on the surface, all the moderation team appears to have done is just join in with this mess, continuing the cycle of maintaining the vision of a narcissistic man who wants to rate the levels that he specifically likes and shut down specific levels sometimes and other times be completely open to it. I am sick of it. I'm sick of being told that this is not what is happening because clearly, it is. You are shut down from mentioning any of these issues by people who are trying to channel their inner Boris Johnson and just spout a bunch of nonsense that sound complicated and educated but deep down is just a bunch of biased garbage literally with extra words. <sighs> so, what can we do about this? Well, if we assume that the rating system isn't going to change in the structure, meaning Rotop is still the only one who will be able to rate levels, one thing I believe the rating system would benefit from is removing the score of creator points, hence removing the current creator leaderboard. Unlike the star leaderboards which is climbed through grinding stats that everyone has access to, creator points are things that only the developer of the game can give you, which obviously will result in some creators being favored over others. This is a big contributor to why levels appear so factory produced because some player's motive is to get these points. And while trying to get these points isn't a negative in itself, combine this with the biased and selective way that Robtop picks the levels he rates and this is a recipe for disaster. Some players and creators out there want to get up to the top in the cheapest and quickest way possible. These people couldn't give a shit about how they get there, how garbage the things they produce are, or how narcissistic they are about their abilities. And this isn't a GD community problem, this is a human problem, which is impossible to fix. But something definitely needs to be done with the creator points because right now, they only amplify this issue. Another and more drastic choice would be to consider if it would be better that the rating system was removed completely. Would it be better for levels and their quality to speak for themselves and have their popularity be gained through sheer effort, well structured gameplay and astounding decoration? Will that motivate creators to finally break this cycle with ratings removed? Well, no. Main counterpoint, Mario Maker. If we remove the rating system entirely, it'll just end up like that game where amazing levels are mixed together with the most awful creations you will have ever seen in a platformer. They're given the same amount of publicity with no one knowing or being guided to where a great level would be, which is what the rating system in Geometry Dash does. But clearly, the way Geometry Dash is handling it isn't fully working either. So realistically, what we need is a system that is in between these two approaches. One that doesn't have selective and biased opinions, one that does stick to a set list of criteria a level needs to meet for it to be more showcased, and one that considers the intent behind what the creators have tried to do. Thankfully, a rating system like this already exists in a public setting. The game that has this is Osu. This ranking system is also biased to some extent, but nowhere near as much as Geometry Dash's rating system. In Osu's ranking system, a user uploads a map to the server, Usually these maps aren't completed for ranking and are in a state where they can receive feedback still. These maps are classified as work in progress or 
pending. Usually users set it to work in progress if they're still working on the map, and they set it to pending if they think the map is complete. An example of a user's page of maps is presented here. The two work in progress maps don't have enough difficulties to match the ranking criteria, while the other pending do, aside from the first, which this user has decided not to rank. When the user thinks that the map is ready for ranking, it is time to look for mods. Mods are not people in Osu. Mods are essentially feedback that come in the form of mod posts in a discussion thread, like one of these. As seen here, there are people posting issues and the creator of the map is fixing things based off their statements. Sometimes there are objective issues, like violating the rules they have for a map to be ranked in the first place, and sometimes there are suggestions to improve the map. Anyone can mod a map, but what mappers look for are beat map nominators, BN for short. This is pretty much the equivalent of Geometry Dash moderators. Beat map nominators are the people that have the ability to nominate maps for the ranked section, and you need two of these people to qualify a map for ranking. Once they've modded the map and ensured that it is free of issues, the BNs can nominate the map for ranking. The BN users Eleu and Yogurt are the nominators of this map, and once they have nominated the map, the map moves into the next step, the qualified section. In the qualified queue, they must stay there for at least seven days. It's basically a queue for maps that are about to be ranked, and so they're highlighted for exposure to more people to find any last minute issues or changes. If there are any issues or changes you want to make, or if others spot a problem with your map, the map must be disqualified to address the issues and fix. After the time and qualified is over, the map is then finally ranked. You can't update a qualified or a ranked map, so you have to be sure that this is the final version of the map, which is the general process. Now, to apply for BN, which as stated is this game's equivalent to GD's moderator, is a much more complicated process, unlike GD, where it is randomly selected by someone saying, they're nice because I said so, pick them. With Osu, you need to pass a test with multiple choice questions and practical questions. The multiple choice questions is open book, so you can feel free to reference anything when you're answering it. The practical questions involves you sending discussion of maps you've modded to the nomination assessment team, NAT for short. The NATs are just BNs with permissions, much like the Alda moderator status in Geometry Dash. The NATs evaluate these applications and if they pass, congratulations, welcome to the Beatmap Nominators team. But now, they are in probation before they are fully accepted. The nomination assessment team will then monitor their performance and see if they are going to pass and join the Beatmap Nominators fully. If there are complications, they get extended probation and at worst, kicked. But if all goes well, they will have passed and successfully joined the team. It is very rarely that a developer of the game will interact with the ranking process, unlike Robtop who is literally the only one who can actually rate the GD level. The Osu developers are only there as a last resort if a ranked map has a horrible issue that slipped by in the qualified section. This happens every now and then, and if it does, penalties come into play. Of course, as a beatmap nominator, you must check the maps you mod properly before nominating them. Disqualifications ideally are something to be avoided, and of course, depending on the reason for the disqualification, the beep map nominator usually gets penalized. Based off the severity of the disqualification, during the regular evaluation of all BNs, the NAT will determine if the BNs get to keep their position, get probationed, or get kicked. This system, while still potentially biased, is much better than the current Geometry Dash rating system. There are some aspects of this that cannot be implemented, such as the objective way they decide if a map is to be ranked since there are more aspects to consider in Geometry Dash that Osu doesn't have. But given what I discussed in the video about GD Community's criticism being worthless, combining the conclusion to that with Osu's ranking system would solve a ton of current community issues. But this would imply that the people in charge of GD's systems actually want this to change. And I put emphasis on the word entire because I fully well know moderators who want this to change, very likely to what has just been discussed here. From what I can tell from the outside, the moderation team appears to be divided in two. There are those who want the system to change and there are those who are happy with the current power that they have, not wanting to lose it. And unfortunately, the latter is the louder one. As stated in the beginning of this, I can't point at individuals, but there definitely seems to be a form of power struggle going on. And if you think that I'm being paranoid about this, how come the moderation team is so transparent then? In Osu, the system is perfectly clear how it works. You have the beat map nominators, nomination assessment team, rules to follow in order to get a ranked map, and no hidden statements. The system and rules are perfectly clear for everyone. While there can still be a biased and selective way some maps are ranked, for majority of it maps aren't treated differently because a certain creator made them. 
everyone has to follow the same rules, and you rarely have to deal with ranking choices that appear very far-fetched or just straight-up confusing. But with GD's system, we don't know. And if you're going to go at me now saying I'm trying to treat speculative theories as an objective fact, what else am I supposed to do? We don't know what's really going on, so we really are just bound to assume. It's hidden from the public view. Why are some creators allowed to have layout-like levels rated but some don't? Why are old-style levels from some creators fine for a rate but for others it's not? Why are demon ratings deliberately put through a filter when no other rating in the entire game is given this treatment? It's all hidden. No one knows except those involved. So to summarize, this speculative viewpoint on the situation is kind of something the entire system has brought upon itself. And most importantly, I happen to notice an interesting parallel between GD's moderation team and a much more popular team who are dealing with heavy backlash as we speak. The YouTube team. Think about it. They set rules for what is allowed on YouTube, everyone follows these guidelines, and if we fail to follow these set guidelines when uploading a video, monetization is removed from the video or at worst, age-restricted or deleted. If we keep doing this too many times, the channel may just be removed from being able to monetize in the first place. Sometimes this can be for perfectly justifiable reasons, and in some instances, it could be favoritism or bias. This is demonstrated recently with Corey X Kenshin, and how one of his videos were age-restricted showcasing the same content as other big YouTube channels, but they did not have to suffer from being age-restricted for unknown reasons. When the YouTube team was confronted about the ordeal, they ended up initially removing the age restriction from the video by looking at Markiplier's channel and seeing if he was initially age restricted for showcasing the same content. One of the conclusions that Corey could draw from the situation was that YouTube was showcasing an act of favoritism. Why was he treated differently from someone else who was doing the exact same thing? Can you notice the similarities? Rules supposedly being presented in plain sight by the team to try and make it as fair as possible but ends up cherry picking favorites. Not everyone in the team are responsible for doing this, but there are still aspects that would suggest some people in the team are doing it. And since motives and actions of theirs are just not explained to the public usually, one can really only resort to speculation. Take for instance what Jack Jacksepticeye had to say regarding the situation. I want to talk a little bit about that, not just Corey's case, but my sort of experiences with it as well, because the amount of times and I have very good evidence of this as well because I have a girlfriend who does the exact same job as me in the other room and a lot of times we upload the same games. And this has happened a couple of times now where we'll both upload the same game, her video will get flagged or claimed or something like that and mine will be totally fine. And then she's wondering why mine is clear and I'm also like, yeah, that's so weird. Why is mine suddenly fine? Like, that they just not flag me because I'm a bigger creator? It's like, why did hers get flagged instantly and mine didn't, because she got flagged for the Mortuary Assistant as well, got age-restricted for the same scene, and it took days before mine did. When you think, if it's supposed to be that obvious that it's in the system and these types of scenes are happening and they get auto-flagged by this system, shouldn't it be consistent across everybody's? I don't want special treatment because I'm a bigger YouTuber. Of course, the issues with each team are very different, but the general principle and the issues with the execution of said principle are rather similar. There are aspects of favoritism, usage of rules among everyone being inconsistent, they do keep things hidden, and some of their actions are never truly explained. This needs to change, and unfortunately, I don't see it happening given the current climate in the community. Robtop and a bad section of the moderation team are happy with the state of this, but rest assured that theoretically, these are simple issues to fix. Out of all the discussion videos, this is one I'm most interested in seeing the comments for. But truly, I do think a lot of problems would be solved by simply combining those two different aspects I mentioned previously. Change the way we critique levels in this game, and change the rating system to a similar structure to the one of Osu's. To me, that is where the game should be, and that is where we can solve majority of the problems in this community. These two topics affect Geometry Dash in such a universal way that if these two were to change to essentially anything, you would immediately see an impact on the levels released today. Of course, it would take time, but it could be a natural evolution to something much better. And realistically, with a rating system like Osu's, I would probably struggle getting the Hell Series levels rated. Yeah, GD Discord server, can you believe that? No more rated Hell Series levels. Wouldn't that be a blessing? Wouldn't you want to consider this new rating system then? I'm totally not trying to lure you in so your shit levels don't get rated.